This is the FL Sun S1 3D printer. And a couple weeks ago, FL Sun sent it over to me for testing and evaluation. And uh, it's been a bit of an ongoing thing. So some things I do like, it's a fast Delta. It's got a pretty decent print volume. It's got a built-in filament dryer. That's pretty cool, but it's got a lot of things I don't like. Like a lot of modern 3D printers, it's shipping in somewhat of an unfinished state. FL Sun Slicer cannot hold a candle to Bamboo Studio or Prusa Slicer or Orca or any of the other current modern slicers. It's stop trying to make your fork of slicer happen. It's not gonna happen. Also, the implementation of Clipper on here is really not that good. It's got a lot of weird quirks to it. For example, you can barely adjust your Z offset and you don't have a way of saving it after you've adjusted it. So your first layer is what you get, good luck. But there's also another thing that I really don't like about this printer and that is a trend with a lot of modern 3D printers. We gotta go fast and to go fast, you gotta move a lot of air. And this has a CPAP machine which is a problem. It's loud. In fact, it's so loud, when I started to print the other night remotely, and this kicked on, my wife, who was in the house, in the living room, watching TV, thought something broke out here, or something happened, because you can hear this on the other side of my house. So, what's going on here, and can we fix this? So yeah, that's pretty loud. So let's segue over something a little bit more appealing to your ears. A message from our sponsor, PCBWay. Do you need to get something 3D printed and your 3D printer is just not up to the task? Or you don't even have a 3D printer? Well, PCBWay has got you covered. They have the ability to 3D print your designs in multiple different plastics, including ABS, polycarbonate, or even SLA nylon. And on top of that, if 3D printed plastic isn't up to it, they also have a whole CNC shop as well, so you can get it made out of metal. What's wrong with that? And of course, it wouldn't be a PCB way ad without reminding you about their PCBs. So if you need some magic sand that's been taught to think with electricity somehow due to modern technology, well, they've got you covered there. So if you've got a project in mind, PCB way has got you covered. Link in the video description below. And again, thank you for sponsoring today's video. So we're gonna be using a decibel meter on my phone here. It's an app. It's obviously not the most accurate thing in the world by any means, but at least it should give us an A and B comparison from before and after. So just for reference with all the printers off or in standby, we're about 30, mid thirties for the decibel. Now let me turn the CPAP on. So standing here in front of it with the CPAP on, it's about 50 decibels. Now the thing is, it's not a clean 50 decibels. It's high pitched, there's a whine to it. It's, it's a very annoying noise. So let's get this down off the bench and see what's going on. Okay, so this is the top of the S1 here. We have a grill here and this is I think the source of our problem. This is the inlet for the CPAP. So let's get this plate off. So we have the CPAP blower right here. We have a control board. Um, this is the driver board for the CPAP. And I think this is our problem, is the fact that this is drawing air from outside. Now, at first, you're probably thinking, oh, that's a good idea. You know, above the printer, it'll be nice, cool air versus what's in the chamber. That's not a great idea, I don't think. Um, the only other printer I have with a CPAP is my VZBot, which if you look at it, the CPAP intake's in the back there. It's that hole in the back. And I think you'd much better off drawing air from inside the chamber. And the reason for that is, the point of the part cooling fan is to drop the temperature of the molten plastic so it solidifies. If you're drawing air from outside the chamber, especially if you're printing something like ABS or another high temperature plastic, you might shock it by cooling it too quickly. Um, you you kind of want to blow warm air over the printed part, not really cold air, or at least what would be cold air if uh, my garage wasn't an oven right now. But either way, I think we can kill two birds with one stone. I, I don't think it'll affect print quality at all. If anything, it'll help with printing ABS. And two, it should cut down on noise if we take this and flip it so that we're drawing air from the chamber, because the chamber's right here. We just have this thin piece of metal. Like the, It's not like the electronics here are fully separate from the print volume. We can just pop a hole in this plate, flip this around, and uh, 
hopefully it'll be better off. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so now it's all removed and we're ready to flip it around. And I think the easiest way to go about doing this is this needs to mount to something. And we don't have room to do like a 3D printed mount because this is pretty much flush. So what we're gonna do, transfer these three holes onto the top plate here so we can mount this to the top plate like that. And then what we'll do is we'll put a hole that's roughly this big, right smack dab in the middle of these three holes because it should all be symmetrical. So that should make this pretty easy to do. So we'll transfer those holes, drill those, drill that hole and go from there. And for those wondering, I put a box under it to catch all the chips. So now I'm gonna vacuum. And there we have it. So we've got the uh, new mount holes on the top plate there. And then we have the new intake hole uh, in the chamber. Now, I could transfer over this little grate, but I'm not too concerned. One, that's going to restrict airflow, and it's also going to make noise because of the uh, air turbulence. And two, we're no longer taking air from above the machine. We're taking it from inside. So something would have to fall up into it. So I'm going to leave this open as is. And... Uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit of wire management because obviously it's upside down, stuff's gonna be a little bit different, but I'm sure I can make it work. So let's go ahead and uh, put it back together. Okay, there's really not enough room. It'd be a lot easier if I extended the wires, but I don't wanna do that. So what I've done is I've moved the uh, controller board for the CPAP from the four standoffs to just the two, and that should give us enough room for everything to line up and we can put the top plate on. Let's try that now. Okie dokie, this comes over here. I think we got it. Okay. Don't have a lot of room. Okay, well, once it's in, it's in. And it looks like it lines up, or at least I won't tell until I'm editing the footage. So when I'm editing the footage, I'll find out. Yeah, I think we're good. So now let's get this back on the bench and uh, power it up. So the question is now, did we gain anything from doing all that work? Um, so I've got the decibel meter up and let's turn the fan on to max like we did before. Okay, so before we were reading about 50 decibels and now 45, 46, 47, it is noticeably quieter. It is noticeably quieter. Obviously, with the door open, it's gonna be louder, but now we actually have the enclosure muffling in a bit and we're drawing warm air from the chamber. So let's get an ABS print going because I've already done a little torture test ABS print here. So this was before the mod. So we'll do a before and after. So let's uh, let this print run and see if we've gained anything or if we've lost anything. Okay, so we have our two test prints here. Uh, this one on the left here is before we flip the CPAP around and the one on the right here is after we flip the CPAP around. So this is external to air and this is drawing air from the chamber. And there's gonna be a few things you're gonna notice. Uh, the looking top down at it, it is over extruded. I printed this with completely default slicer settings and the exact same G code for both prints. So we're not really looking at that. What we are looking at is overhangs and details that the CPAP fan, the part cooling fan will actually affect the most. And that is probably gonna be shown the most in this big overhang here. And I don't know about you. Yeah, there is some very slight differences between the two, but it's not really anything I would write home about. Uh, it, it is kind of hard to say, because this is only one of one, one of one print. So it's a low sample volume. But just looking at both these prints, I'm gonna call it that we really didn't see any drop in quality. Yeah, I, I think I think you're barely gonna be able to tell any difference between the two and all the bridged parts and whatnot came out okay. And that is a very drastic overhang before stuff even starts looking kind of poopy. So yeah, I'm gonna call that a success. So there you have it. We have the CPAP flipped around on the FL Sun S1. So we 
we aren't seeing any real decrease in print quality. Uh, a couple of things I thought of after is now that since we're drawing air from inside the chamber, instead of, you know, drawing virgin fresh air from outside the chamber, uh, for those that are printing materials like ABS, you should be getting some higher chamber temperatures here. Now, if I was smart, I would have put some semesters in here and tested the before and after, but I just realized that now as I'm recording this, so it's a little too late to test that. But uh, yeah, that, that's also advantage. It's a little bit quieter. For those wondering why I didn't go with a muffler, uh, mufflers tend to restrict airflow. So since we're going with the CPAP, we, we want all the air. We just don't want all the noise, so. You know, flipping it around is not a crazy hard project to do. It's something FL Sun could do in future revisions of the printer. Because other than the, the CPAP being really loud, um, the, mechanically, I don't really have a lot to complain about this machine. Uh, most of the stuff that I take issue with can be fixed in post with slicer updates or firmware updates. So who knows, maybe in a future world vision, they'll, they'll rework their CPAP setup on this. But yeah, that, that was a, uh, a fun little afternoon project with the FL Sun S1. If you want to help support the channel, the content I create, and the things I do, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon supporter. Check out some of those links in the description below. Huge shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. And again, I'm Taylor, the Canuck creator, and uh, this was fun. Cheers. <laughs>